this is uh, Dr. Perry coming at you from Stop Chasing Pain, and I'm um, going to talk to you a little bit about movement slings and subsystems, kind of give you a peek into some of the biggest dysfunctions that you're probably going to come across when you work with clients that you're going to see in training. And I typically start off every presentation with this one slide. It's one of my favorites that I actually take a picture off the internet just to kind of show uh, how human movement is related to positions that we used to do when we were little to what we're doing now. And unfortunately, as most people who try to get in those positions on that picture that you see on the right, they can't do that anymore. And movement uh, never lies. That's a quote that actually was taken from Martha Graham, who's a brilliant dance teacher and instructor from the past. And I love that because it really tells the whole truth about how a person feels about themselves, um, about their body, about their past, their confidence level, their emotional level, and it can divulge, you know, past injuries and pain that they have. So if you're very observant at looking at movement from the very first time that you meet your client, um, you can really tell a lot about someone. So I'm I'm uh, a big believer in movement that it says a lot about every person, whether they remember it or not on a conscious and uh, subconscious level. So um, one of the things that uh, I firmly believe is that everybody has a movement dysfunction. They just don't know it yet. And what I mean by movement dysfunction is that there's some altered movement pattern. It doesn't necessarily mean that somebody's going to have pain, but it can certainly lead to a higher increase in injury, especially if you're going to be loading it up with more intense training or external load. But with the movement dysfunctions that people have because of adaptations that, that they've had over their lifetime, they can actually have breaks on movement, which means that they can't get past a certain point on power, strength, endurance, durability. So they have actually hit the wall on a level because of these underlying movement dysfunctions. So the more you can clear those out and then help take the breaks off, and very easy things that you can do on these primal subsystems, you can really go a long way towards helping someone because most people don't think they've got a movement problem until they've got one thing, and that's usually pain. I mean, when they have pain, it's like, hey, I know something's wrong. And in your environment, if somebody has pain as a trainer, um, you should definitely be working with a healthcare professional that you trust and you work with, maybe somebody that uh, you can send them to. Or reach out and get to know the healthcare professional that your client may be working with. And because pain changes the game, um, it definitely crosses over into the line and the scope of uh, practice and what you can do from uh, being a healthcare professional to a fitness professional. But I do think there's a lot of things that you can do to help somebody who's hurting because some of the things that I'm going to show you are not going to be anywhere near where the side of pain is. But that's pretty much what my business is about is not just chasing pain, but working with people who treat pain, and also you're going to help them get in with function. So, you know, most people, uh, you know, they don't know they've got problems, but we know. We typically know when somebody has increased fatigue, they get tired very quickly. The activities of daily living are impacted. Small things that they can't do anymore, they just start taking for granted. You know, I used to take the stairs, now I take the escalator or the elevator. I used to be able to go outside and take my walk, but now I can't because of pain. Or somebody has decrease in durability. They just get this morning aches, stiffness, pain after workouts. They have a longer recovery time. They have more intense soreness after a workout. They're popping pain relievers like candy. So, you know, this is something that they take before they even work out. And the tightness, stiffness, and aches are just almost a part of everyday life for them. And they look at it as something that's normal. Um, it's common, but it's not normal for that particular individual. And uh, most of the time, you're going to see in your world, it's uh, a decrease in mobility. They just are locked down in joints, particularly the ankle's going to lock down a lot. The hips don't move. They can't get into external, internal rotation, and definitely not into extension. The thoracic spine jams up, so you're doing T-spine mobility drills all the time, or their cervical range of motion locks down as well. But there's a few things that I usually teach everybody in regards to um, the human body itself, and that 
I truly believe that everything is an underlying stabilization problem. So working on somebody's core stability is going to help unlock their mobility problems when you work with it. But the body is actually very uh, unstable. It's inherently unstable. So we all started out on the ground just laying around, unable to control our head, sucking our thumb, not able to do much until we earn the 